In this video, I will show you how you can manage Microsoft Teams settings using Microsoft Power Automate. In this example, I will show you how you can turn off fun settings like Giphy emoticons in chat messages. In this example, I will just add a message and I will add a meme. And as you can see, it has been added. Let's say I want to change these settings so that end users are not able to send these memes or GIFs to other users. A way to do this is by going to the admin center of Microsoft Teams, go to the specific Teams. In this case, we have an example team, and here you will see all these type of settings. And in this case, we want to manipulate the fun settings, the Giphy settings. Now go to the top. In the right top corner, we click on Edit. And here down here, we can change the fun settings and turn it off. We can also manipulate other settings like guest permissions. This is a way to do it manually. Now I will find a show a way how you can do it using Power Automate. In this case, I'm first going to register a new application inside of Azure Active Directory. So I go to the portal.azure.com and I'm going to register an application. I'm going to give this an example name. Managing Microsoft Teams settings using Power Automate. To showcase accounts in this organizations only. Keep the redirect URI empty and press register. Now that I've created an application registration, I need to copy a few elements. The application client ID and the directory tenant ID. Copy these values to a notepad because you're later on going to need this for the example. Now we're going to change the API permissions. So we'll go to API permissions and then give this application the right permissions. From adding permissions, I go to Microsoft Graph API and go to application permissions. The settings that I want to manipulate is Teams settings. So we'll go to Team settings and I will turn on the read write options. If I also want to be able to read the settings, I'm also going to turn on the read all settings. So I'm adding the permissions. In order to work with the permissions, I have to grant admin consent using an administrator account in my Azure Active Directory tenant. So in this case, I'm going to grant admin consent and press yes. Now the team settings has been approved. Then I go to the certificates and secrets, and I'm going to create a client secret. A new client secret value is one of the values that we'll need in Power Automate. So I'm going to give this a name and then give a time when it will stop working. In this case, it's six months. I will add this. Keep in mind, the moment that you created this value, it's only displayed once. So click on copy to clipboard and paste this somewhere in your notepad. Now that we've created all the settings in Azure Active Directory, we can now go to Power Automate to create a flow. I already created a new flow, so I'll go back and show you an example. I will go to My Flows, click on New Flows, and I'll choose for an instant Cloudflow. I give my Cloudflow a name, in this case, Manage Team Settings using Microsoft Graph API. We can choose a trigger, which I'm not going to do in this example. I will do it when I open up the Power Automate Studio. So I click on Skip, and here in the top, I'll search for HTTP triggers. So I'm going to create an, when an HTTP request is received. It's a premium ticket. In this example, it requests a body JSON schema. That will be what type of data will I send over in JSON format. I have an example written down here, so I will just copy this. Click on Use Sample Payload and press Done. Then I'm going to add some variables. First, I'm going to initialize a variable, give the proper name, application ID, and I'll make it from the type string application. ID. The value for the application ID is the value that you can get from the app registration settings. So when I go to the overview page, I can just copy the app 
notification client ID settings. And then I press save. I give my Microsoft Power Automate flow a proper name. And press save. The next thing that I will do is create two other variables, which I already did in example. So I actually go to my example code. And walk you to it. So here you see I've already did the previous step. Once you save it, it will open create this post URL, which you can use to send data to using HTTP requests. In this example, I've added an application ID and a particular value. Directory tenant ID and the same thing that you have to do using the client secret. The client secret value was the value that you created in Azure Active Directory in here. So you can copy this value and add this to this example. Then you're going to do an HTTP request. We're going to use the method using patch, and this is the URI to send the data to. Look at the example of the Teams ID. A Teams ID is a specific ID number describes the ID of the team. In this case, this is the ID number. When I'm going to send the data, I'm also going to send the ID number in order to make it work. So this is the specific ID number of the Microsoft team. I go down and here I have to send a body payload. The body payload is the example that I just provided earlier. I'm posting this in the body and in the body I'm going to change a couple of settings. We don't need to send the team's ID with, it's only there to be used in the URI. Then we have some basic values. The values, this is hard coded, so now I'm going to make it dynamic by changing the particular values. In this case, it's limited message to owners. I will search it and replace it with the actual value. This will make sure that the value that I will send to this HTTP request will be replaced using the value that's inside of this variable object. Then you're going to do this with all these values because I've did this before I bring back the original one and as you can see it has been provided for all the different settings now that I have all these settings I also create a sort of a notification to my email that will be the response that's saying that the Microsoft Teams settings has been adjusted now I'm going to use Postman to send the request so when I go to Postman these are all the settings that I'm going to send to Power Automate in the request form, I've used the URI that has been provided by Power Automate. Go back. Here in the top, this is the post URL link that I'm going to use. So in Postman, I'm going to do a post request. In the body, I'm going to use a raw JSON format of text and then paste the body loads. And here, I'm going to change the settings. In this case, I want to turn off the on settings to allow Giphy. So I'm going to turn this off into false. And also the custom memes. To check if it works, I'm going to make sure that Power Automate is in testing mode. So I will turn on testing mode and turn on manual testing. The manual testing has been is in action so it's waiting for me to send the request i go back to postman and then i click on send but before i send it i want you to look at this particular emoticon as you can see i can add gifis to it now when i'm going to send it i turned it all onto false so after this you wouldn't be able to change it and to send Kiffy's, so I'm sending the request. I'll go to Power Automate to see if it runs successfully. And as you can see, it has been run successfully. 
and I also get an email confirmation. And when I go to Teams, you will notice that that icon is gone. So I'm not able to send any type of Giphy's anymore. When I look at the settings and when I refresh the page, I go to settings and you'll see that the Giphy settings has been turned off. And this way you can automate all types of settings using Power Automate and the Microsoft Graph API. Another example of things that you could change is for instance using guest permissions. Some ideas of how you can implement this, you can also create a Microsoft form that can create a Microsoft Teams and then use Power Automate that will create the Microsoft Teams and also automatically update the management team settings. Those are some examples of things that you can do using Power Automate and the Microsoft Graph API. If you want to learn more, I would say go to www.skillsforit.nl 